Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz, and this is Prime News. So our lead story today deals with the Nintendo Super Smash Bros. Invitational happening at E3 because today they have announced the eight participants, all of them being pro Smash players, either of the Wii U version of the game or of Melee. And all of them will be playing Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Switch in the tournament for the very first time. So there's basically no prep time to uh, for these pro players to get used to whatever changes happen in the new Smash Bros. But without further ado, let's get into the eight people participating. Uh, first up, we have MK Leo, who is a professional Super Smash Bros. for Wii U player from Mexico. His favorite Nintendo game is Fire Emblem, and he was a champion at Genesis 4 and Genesis 5. He was also the EVO Japan 2018 champion. Next up, we have Zero, a professional Super Smash Bros. for Wii U player from Chile. His favorite Nintendo game is Xenoblade Chronicles. His hobbies include writing and motocross. He was the champion at EVO 2015 and Genesis 3. He also won the Super Smash Bros. Invitational in 2014. Next up is Armada. He's a professional Super Smash Bros. Melee player from Sweden. His favorite Nintendo game is Super Mario 64. His hobbies include ice hockey and table tennis. He's the Genesis 2 singles champion and the Genesis 4 doubles champion. Next up we have a Bandango, a professional Super Smash Bros. for Wii U player from Japan. His favorite Nintendo franchise is the Xenoblade series. His hobbies include watching anime and reading. He was a runner-up at EVO Japan 2018. He also ranked in the top 5 at EVO 2016 and Genesis 4. Plup, a professional Super Smash Bros. Melee player from Florida. His favorite Nintendo game is Super Metroid. And his favorite Nintendo memory is beating Super Metroid for the first time. He was the champion at Genesis 5. Next up, we have Mr. R, a professional Super Smash Bros. for Wii U player from the Netherlands. His favorite Nintendo game is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. His hobbies include reading manga and traveling. He was the runner-up at EVO 2015. Next up is Lucky, a professional Super Smash Bros. Melee player from California. His favorite Nintendo game is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. He ranked in the top 5 at EVO 2017 and at Genesis 5. And our last participant is Mango, a professional Super Smash Bros. Melee player from California. His favorite Nintendo game is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. He was the champion at EVO 2014. And in addition, there will be some exhibition matches with special, specially invited select guests. I assume this is where you start seeing YouTubers participate, where you start seeing um, celebrities participate, all that stuff. Maybe Reggie Fiza may get a match in or something. But yeah, these are the participants in the actual Invitational Tournament. Uh, that should make for a very entertaining tournament because all of them are a high level among the best of the best in the business of playing Smash Bros, which means we're going to see an extremely high level of play, even higher than we saw back in the 2014 Invitational. So this is going to be intense, and I can't wait for it to occur. I believe this is happening the day of E3. Uh, I don't think the time's been announced because it happens after the Splatoon 2 championships. Moving on, uh, the next story we're talking about is actually one we did touch upon a day or so ago. Uh, but we need to make sure we recap it properly. Nintendo has lifted the veil on their online services. Uh, to quickly recap things, there are solo memberships, which cost $3.99 for one month, $7.99 for three months, and $19.99 for a year. Now, there is, in addition to this, a new membership plan they never told us before, the Family Plan, which is $34.99. The Family Plan is required for any Switch that has more than one account on it that wants to also play online. Uh, or if you would like to hook up eight additional, up to eight additional switches with their own unique accounts. So on May 15th, you will be able to start creating family groups, and it's from this group that the family plan would be applied to their accounts, and then if they have their own individual switches, they would have access to online services. Moving on, uh, the probably one of the biggest positives, it should have been the most expected thing, but still surprising to finally see Nintendo do it. Uh, the online system will include cloud saving. Again, a standard feature on most electronics, but Nintendo is finally adding it with the Nintendo online service. Uh, next up, they are launching with 20 NES games that will come with online multiplayer and 
well, leaderboards. Now, beyond that, they also said the single-player games are going to feature swap play. So what that means is you could have a friend on another Switch, not even in the room with you, not even on the same Wi-Fi network, over the Internet watching you play, and then you could swap and then let your friend play, and then you watch them play. So uh, very interesting stuff. I think it's supposed to mimic, you know, handing over a controller in the living room when you have to go to the bathroom or uh, if you're just taking turns trying to bait, beat a single-player game. I know Eric and I have done that in the past, so this would be a very interesting feature to see and add to NES games. I would like to see this feature actually across all single-player games. Like, imagine if we could do Swap in Breath of the Wild. Wouldn't that be intense? Um, I don't know how possible that that is from a technical standpoint when it comes to Switch's hardware, but I would love to see it anyways. Uh, beyond that... Uh, all NES games are actually going to have chat. Uh, they're going to all support voice chat, and it's going to be through the Nintendo Online app. So no, the Nintendo Online app is not going anywhere. Uh, it is notable that this online system right now is only including, including a select lineup of games. Smash Bros. is not on the list right now, but probably will be by the time the system launches. Uh, and what's notable about it is that no third-party games are listed, which means potentially third-party games might not be affected by online. They did say select third-party games might be. So if you're playing Payday 2 as an example or Doom, you may might be able to in September to still play those games for free without getting the online service. We'll have to wait and see for further their details uh we don't have any details on how cloud savings are going to work uh really we don't have a lot of details on anything the family plan is basically the one where we have the most details come out for uh so there is that uh, and as always i'm interested in continuing that conversation down in the comments below if you're wondering what i think about it uh you could check up here and see our original report on it uh and then here again to see um why i'm not a huge fan of the family plan right now moving on uh, the third time we're going to talk about is actually about virtual consoles. So again, another story we reported on before, but it's big enough that we should talk about it again. Uh, I reported earlier, look up here, uh, that we are seeing virtual console get killed by Nintendo. Now, might be a little bit sensational with those remarks, but here's what Nintendo had to say about virtual console. And remember, this is the first time they have talked about virtual console pretty much since Switch was announced. There are currently no plans to bring classic games together under the Virtual Console banner, as has been done with other Nintendo systems. And this was a PR response sent to several different media outlets. So if this is this is obviously Nintendo's general response. This wasn't a rogue PR person just you know saying something. This is their official response now to anyone who asks about Virtual Console on Switch. So Virtual Console, as we know, is not coming to Switch. Uh, some argue that the 20 NES games represent something uh, for Switch. Some people are quick to bring up that before Switch was even unveiled and even announced, they mentioned something about SNES games. But once it was unveiled in October, they never talked about SNES games again. All Nintendo has talked about was the NES games. So uh, I am still a firm belief that... Uh, we should not make presumptions of Nintendo or assumptions. And the problem with this situation is you're either going to presume or assume they're not going to do more than NES games, or you're going to presume or assume they're going to do more than, than just NES games. All I know is, is I don't consider what they are doing right now to be a true replacement for Virtual Console, but that may change over time. We'll have to see. I'm all for uh, the games being offered as a service. I would like to see it as a separate service that isn't necessarily part of the online. I know some might argue, well, if you're going to pay for online, why not include it? And I get that from a consumer level, uh, looking at it as someone who wants to pay for both services, so why not have it? But there might be people who aren't interested in playing like Splatoon 2 and Mario Kart 8, and they don't want to buy um, a paywall service for that, and instead would rather just pay straight up for virtual console stuff. But again, we don't know if this is a really a replacement for virtual console. For all we know, the SNES classics, the NES classics, whatever future classic systems they do, might also be part of that whole replacing virtual console thing. And they sell it phenomenally well. I mean, three, four million. So at this point, who knows what Nintendo's plans are. Uh, moving on, we have three other stories I briefly want to touch upon. Another one that we actually reported late last night uh, is EA projects Switch to sell 30 million lifetime to date by December 21st. Uh, I'm very interested in your guys' predictions on what you think they will sell for this calendar year and then for the total fiscal year that ends March 31st. And we're talking lifetime to date sales. So they don't mean there's going to be 30 more million Switches sold, but that the Switch's total sales will be at 30 million by December 21st. Here's an interesting one. Walmart of Canada is listing NBA 2K19 for Nintendo Switch. You can go there, you can pre-order it, etc. They also have a listing, the very first public listing for Metroid Prime 4. So what does this mean? Uh, it could mean absolutely nothing. We see listing at retailers all the time. 
turn out to be just junk, it, it, nothing at all. But we've also seen listings like this turn out to be gold, especially before E3. So what this could be hinting at is that, one, NBA 2K19 is coming to Switch. That is something that is not presently confirmed. It would not be so shocking or surprising since we did get NBA 2K18 and 2K said they were happy with the sales. So based on their public remarks anyways, you would figure 2K19 is coming to Switch anyways. But uh, Metroid Prime 4 being listed does suggest that Metroid Prime 4 might very well be getting shown off at E3. Again, that's speculation based on a listing on a retailer website. So take that for what you will, but that's really why we're talking about it, is that Metroid Prime 4, a listing like this with the ability to pre-order suggests, yeah, they're showing off the game. It doesn't mean it's coming this year, because companies will accept pre-orders for years, but only after a game's been officially revealed. And Metroid Prime 4 has not been officially revealed yet, so this would suggest that Metroid Prime 4 could be making an appearance at E3. We'll have to wait and see. Wouldn't hold my breath on it too much, but that's why why we brought up the story. Just because it, it, it's a hint. It's a hint anyways. Moving on, our final story is actually from Capcom. They had their financial uh, fiscal roundup for the past year. And uh, we're, there's a lot of details in there about what's upcoming. Something like 52 individual titles are coming. Although the individual titles uh, includes titles that are... Uh, in different languages. So as an example, Mega Man 11 comes out. Well, if it's in English, that's one That's one of the 52. If it's in J Japanese, that's one of the two. If it's in Spanish, that's one of it. So like, it, it's not actually 52 like single solo games, but rather probably like 10 or so that are just localized in a bunch of different languages. However, uh, what's notable about this is that Capcom did say that they have two major releases landing this fiscal year. Uh, we don't know what they consider to be a make, uh, like, like uh, a major release. Uh, you would figure something like a Resident Evil or a Monster Hunter. Uh, those are kind of like big money makers for them. Uh, maybe we're talking about uh, you know something. You know maybe they consider Mega Man Eleven a major release. I don't really think that I would consider that a major release, especially if it takes after the old school Mega Man art styles like Mega Man Nine intended. But uh, yeah, I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. All I know is. Uh, two major games is better than no major games, and all we can do is hope they're coming to Switch. We know Capcom was integral in getting Switch from 2 gigabytes to 4 gigabytes of RAM. For those who don't know that story, uh, when Nintendo sent out its first dev kits to Capcom, Capcom said that their games cannot run on 2 gigs. They need more. They need at least double. So Nintendo did end up doubling the RAM from 2 to 4. So Capcom is partially the thanks for the increased specs of the Switch. But you guys let me know what you think about all of these stories down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime, and you just watched Prime News. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content. And I should let you guys know before uh, we end this video that Prime News is now a Monday, Wednesday, Friday show instead of a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday show. Uh, if you haven't noticed this past week or so, I have been doing individual news stories in between. What this does is allow me to jam-pack more bigger news into Prime News segments and also affords me the time to create all the types of content I want to make. I like making individual news videos. I like making news recaps. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to do both all the time. Uh, that doesn't mean you won't get any more individual news videos the rest of today, but uh, there isn't a plan for that right now. So that's the way it is. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same nights that we do streams. During the day, you get prime news. All right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next one.